to Expired Musings Podcast. My name is Jared. And my name is Amen. And this is where all our thoughts go to die. So have fun. Please do. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Um, <laughs> we missed you guys. We did. I feel like this is, every time we start this, it's more of an apology video. <laughs> <laughs> every time it starts, it's always, listen, <laughs> we're going to be better, we promise. But I think that you've been able to see why it's been taking us a while to come back it's been it, i feel like it's been very obvious and let's today address is no different the elephant in the room yes the colorful elephant the cloud elephant a cloudy elephant the cloudy elephant the cloudy elephant everybody say hello to cloudy elephant this uh was rough's idea she Thank came you. up with it we did it right here in my basement mm -hmm. uh we used a uh, glue that i'm pretty sure damaged half of our brain cells if not more uh we literally started spray painting, or what is it called? Uh, spray gluing next to a man's furnace yep. that we didn't realize in, in an indoor enclosed space. Didn't, didn't open a single window. We're supposed to be intellectuals. <laughs> we're educated. Yeah. Well, Bar. we're alive. <laughs> we're alive and kicking. And look at it. It's so we pretty. We show for it. I thought I named all the lights, which were a gift from Anthony, and the rest was purchased from Michael's. Sponsor us. Please. Do it at home. Uh, please, introduce the characters. Let me do this. Okay. Um, first one. I'm not actually going to introduce it. You have to introduce this one. Because it's Lilith Adam. And you have to pronounce it <laughs> properly. Because <laughs> <laughs> that means it lacks manners. <laughs> Fine. If you want to know how childish Ragad is, she saw this, Saturn, and she went, I'm going to call him Uranus. I said it right. Uranus. You better be professional about this. Do you want, I'm going to say in Arabic. Oranos. I don't know if I like that any better. Really? At least it's not your anus. <gasps> you can't say that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a body part. God. <laughs> who's, who is, who's censoring us? <laughs> Did we not sick? <laughs> okay. She's so stressful. What about this guy, huh? Let me, let me do it. This is Mark. This is Mark. Say hi to Mark. Hi, hi Mark. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> who's this? This is your mom. I've been waiting all week to do that. She really has. She got so excited. She was like, I'm going to name them. This is Uranus. <laughs> this is Mark. And this is your mom. Have some respect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> mm. Do you love it? I'm actually obsessed. Me too. We're so great. I mean, I feel like we're, you know, we're, we're building this setup. Mm hmm and that's why we're here today. This is what we're working on all week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're here. I need to stop doing this every episode. I pretend like we're, we're, we're about not. to have a serious political conversation. No, really not. No. Not so, just like this. Never. <laughs> In a vest. How was your week, Rada? My week's been pretty good. Um, what did I do? I don't remember. I don't remember my week. But something did come in the mail. Uh, this is Sean. The sheep. I got him from eBay, and he's been with me ever since. How much was he at? I don't want to say. She paid twenty six dollars for him. It's actually close to thirty. <laughs> oh, chipping <laughs> handling. <laughs> that's that's. I think that's also the highlight of my week. <laughs> it's just kind of upsetting. I didn't do anything this week either. He's so precious. Yeah, we've been really excited to have Sean the Sheep as part of the team. I mean, haven't you guys seen the show? What a great show! It was. I don't know if it's uh, if it really aired in Canada all that much. But I'm not I, sure. Did Pengu air in Canada that much too? Definitely. It was on TVO Kids. Oh, but really? Sean, he was in Britain. He was a, he he's a British a, lad. He is a British lad, isn't yeah. he? Um, Little British. I don't know what the Brits were doing here. What, was Pengu American? <laughs> I thought Pengu was also English, isn't he? What? He doesn't speak. I thought it was an English creation. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't assuming that the penguin was indeed had an English passport. <laughs> he left all the way to the North Pole. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> he moved away. But anyways, uh, great show. Detour. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my week. How's yours? Nothing special either, to be honest. I've just been, um, I've just been watching a lot of Netflix. Oh, you know what I've been seeing also on Netflix a lot? I'm exhausted. If I see Emily in Paris being advertised one more time. Did you watch it? I finished it. The second season? Yeah. I finished it maybe like three days. I hated every minute of it. It was actual garbage, but I couldn't stop. Why are you watching Emily in Paris? Because I'm committed. Ew. To that wench of a woman? What else am I supposed to do? 
to not watch in vain of an existence. <laughs> I've just been watching, like, good films and stuff. What are you... Ew. I don't have the attention span for a, for a movie anymore. And I will say, like, Emily in Paris seems... I, I don't know. what what. How was this season? Do tell. Um, I didn't watch the first season either. I watched one episode from the first season. What? Yeah. Actually, you're not missing out on anything. I know I'm not. Uh, anyways, so Emily is basically a horrible friend. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. makes friends with this one French girl. And then she steals her boyfriend. <gasps> yeah, the drama. But... The treachery. She then tries to make amends... And this is, I think, the worst part of the whole storyline. She tries to make amends by getting them back together. So the guy cheated on his girlfriend with Emily. Then she goes back to him and she's like, you have to make things right with my friend. So imagine forcing the guy that's in love with you now to go back to his ex-girlfriend. What a pity. Like, what a charity case. (laughs) That's awful. I'd rather be alone forevermore. I would never want to be with somebody that's forced to be with me. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Yeah, so she's what a wench. A, she's actually like an awful friend. Uh, which brings us to the topic of this uh this podcast. Oh yeah, good segue. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. So what is the topic of today? How to lose a friend in ten days. How to lose a friend in ten days. Yeah. Rag and I were maybe a few weeks ago, we were talking about the complexities of friendship and how it's a lot more multi layered than people talk about. Like you know you get to these you have these moments where you're like Oh, she's my friend. And you're like, I don't is she my friend or is she a colleague? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So we started we started going down this rabbit hole of what defines a friend mm-hmm. and what is a friend. And then we just kind of started discussing what would make you lose a friendship. Because I think we can all relate at some point the friends that we had in high school, at least a handful of them are no longer in our lives. Yeah. And I think that's very normal. Yeah. Um, and it kind of continues on to university, right? Like not every friend that you have in university, you're going to continue to have in your adulthood. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, how about we kind of define first what distinguishes between a close friend and a best friend from like our perspective? Yeah. Like we already know what like a colleague is. Yeah. What a, like a a peer is. Mm -hmm. So a close friend and a best friend. A close friend is... I think somebody that you see a lot, mm-hmm. you talk about multiple things, mm-hmm. but there are always areas that will be off limit. While with the best friend, mm-hmm. you actually don't have to talk that much. Mm-hmm. That's what differentiates my best friends, I think. It's oh. like, I could literally not talk to you forever. And when we come back, it's like nothing happened. Interesting. Okay. Um, and I'm able, I specifically come to you to talk about the things that I'm embarrassed or uncomfortable talking about with the close friend. Yeah. Okay. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, actually, I think that's a very good way to put it. Um, my uh, thing that kind of separates it is with my best best friends. <laughs> I just did a little Beth. list. Of my, friend. <laughs> my friend Beth. <laughs> my friend Beth. Um, yeah, I would say I would be able to go to them for anything. I also spend more time with them. I think time plays a huge role in Ooh. who determines how, or how it determines my, how close my friends are. Mm-hmm. Fair. And if, I think, you know what? A great way to put it, are you willing to travel with them? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. I think that actually encompasses everything because if they're, you know, um, easy to live with. Yeah. If they get along with you in terms of, uh, like, difficult situations. Mm-hmm. Because when you're traveling, often enough, you encounter uh, certain things, like, for example, uh, hunger, if you've been traveling for a while. Ooh, and you're moody. And you're moody, or you're lost, for instance. And you're in distress. Yeah, or um, maybe you lost something along the way, and you're upset about that. Mm. There's so many different things that can go wrong when you're traveling, and how you react when you're together i Mm. think that shows whether you guys make a good um friend couple (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. no it is kind of it is it is a relationship yeah it truly is we travel together yeah i was gonna just hold it no that's your hands are sweaty how dare you tell people (laughs) it is what it is (laughs) who who do you think Mm -hmm. it do you think that best friends surpass 
the you know these dodgy times in your life when you're like going through like maturity bursts mm-hmm. and you lose a lot of people mm-hmm. so for example from high school to university mm-hmm. you hit that maturity burst and you lose a lot of people mm-hmm. from grade school to to high school same thing yeah and then from university to the working life mm-hmm. same thing do you think that best friends are best friends because they have the capability to survive these bursts of big changes in your life I think, I remember like I read a quote about this somewhere, not necessarily about friends, it was mainly about soulmates, but basically the person that wrote it was saying like how, you know, this has, this, I'm going to segue a little bit. The person was saying how everybody has multiple soulmates, Mm. but you meet them at different points in your life and they're there for that moment of time. And for a particular reason, I'm guessing. For a particular reason. So for example, maybe your first couple years of uni, you meet a soulmate then. They're there to kind of get you through the troublesome times that come with, you know, academic stress mm. and um, loneliness. Issues, yeah. yeah. It'll be different than, for example, a soulmate you had in high school, where it'd be a lot more juvenile, maybe a lot more naively Discovering in yourself, yeah. your personality. Oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, so you meet different soulmates along the way, and they're there only for a particular time, and they're that person that's meant for you at that particular time in your life, because mm-hmm. that's when you need them the most. Mm-hmm. That's what this one person was saying. I don't remember where I wrote this, but I like to think of friends the same way in the sense that, yeah, they didn't last maybe forever, um, forever, but they were there during that particular moment in my life and they served their purpose as a best friend. Mm-hmm. And if it as didn't... As you did for them. As I did for them. Right. And if it didn't continue, then at that point, maybe our beliefs or values changed but that doesn't mean that time we spent together, like, our moral compass was still in line at that time. Right. So they haven't lost... Yeah. So that means that just because things changed, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that the value of that time you spent together has become, like... Tainted. Tainted, yeah. right? Or, like, not as important. Okay, I see what you mean. I see. Yeah. I agree. I think that we frequently walk away from failed friendships with disdain yeah and um and negativity and like discomfort when in reality it's okay i think something that i noticed a lot this happened a lot when i was 22 23 Mm -hmm. i remember i'd meet people and they would say especially i have friends in jordan Mm -hmm. and i have friends here Mm -hmm. and when i used to go back to jordan every year i'd go back my friend group would change because you don't realize over a year how much people change. Mm. So I would go back and be like, we clicked last year, but for some reason we don't click this year. And okay. that's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then maybe they would leave my life. And then some of them even came back after a while. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it was this weird thing that I used to experience. So I remember having conversations with a lot of people being, and, and they were in distress being like, I feel like when like I meet my friends after a while or a certain mm-hmm. group of friends, you feel like, you guys are not in the same point and you even feel like, oh, like I've moved on and it seems like they're in the same place. I've heard that a lot before. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not necessarily the case. They could have moved on just in different ways than you. It doesn't have to be, you know, they they start a new career. It could be just simply that they um, are exploring new areas of themselves or they're exploring new hobbies. You know, everything doesn't have to be so drastic and extreme. But what I was trying to say is that it's okay it's okay to have these people move on and it's okay for you to move on. And I don't think it's necessarily a good idea to linger on dying friendships because it's up to you, right? So Mm -hmm. let's say that you feel like this could be saved. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm ranting, but there's an idea here. Yeah. Is that like, let's say you feel like this friendship can be saved. Jeez. This friendship can be saved. Mm -hmm. However, you have tried your best and at this point it's getting exhausting. Mm Mm-hmm. At what point do we say, it's okay, it's time to let go of this friend? Do you think that'd be a bad thing? Do you think you should continue to try? Or do you think there's a point where you just say, it is what it is? I think I'm more on the selfish side where it's always been numero uno. (laughs) Meaning, uh, I like to put myself first. Mm -hmm. Um, I always kind of did that, even uh, late high school, early uni, and that's why I was... I always had a select uh, group of friends, Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't exactly the most welcoming to new friends. New friends. New friends. Newcomers. Uh, Yeah, new friends into the group, mainly because 
once I've already decided who my friends are, like, I didn't need any more. That doesn't mean I was, like, rude or I didn't have, like, acquaintances or... How dare you? <laughs> um, or that I didn't have, like, casual friends, I guess. Mm-hmm. I was very much a social butterfly. Ask anyone. But I didn't allow anybody into my own personal um, bubble like that. That was a menace. How dare you? I used to fight for people with people all the time. Where this is uni, not grade school anymore. <laughs> I used to fight people in grade school. She used to fight people in high school. In, in university, you weren't as angry. I think by then I burned out. Yeah, I think you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all out of your system. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. There's something nice about, I think that I'm a social butterfly, but I think that a lot of people misunderstand. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm just like friendly for the sake of being friendly. Or have a conversation with you and, and it seems to go well. And then people get the impression that, oh, like, she wants to be my friend. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't. No. Sometimes I'm grateful. Thank you for the, for the conversation. Thank you for your time. Doesn't mean I want you as a friend. I like to think, like, any sort of uh, emotional energy or, uh, you know, your personal well-being, like, you don't want to pour that all into somebody that you don't actually care for. <laughs> Yeah. Because we only have so much of it, and this world drains us of every last drop. True. And you know what? This year has been harder than ever for me to keep maintain or keep, like, I don't want to say, like, close friendships, close relationships, but it is an effort. Yeah. You do have to make sure that you're regularly checking in on people, yep. which I'm not the best at. You do have to make sure that um, you allow certain times for people, and then... That alone, like, I struggled with so much because I'm like, okay, all I want to do when I go home is sleep Mm. and eat, and I'm exhausted from work. So balancing that out is, like, its own job. What about even when we we got out of lockdown? I remember feeling social anxiety for the first time in my life. I'm not necessarily somebody who used to have social anxiety. Mm -hmm. But going from, like, spending time in my house for, what, four months? Yeah. To, like... Now we're having these interactions that I haven't felt. And so it was scary. Mm-hmm. And it felt like I would go home tired. Mm-hmm. Remember that feeling of like social fatigue? Because I'm so used to being comfortable at home. And then all of a sudden now I have to get back into it. So I think that, yeah, I think that friendships, a lot of people's friendships were put into question during COVID. Mm-hmm. It could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. Because then it just kind of shows, like, was your friendship dependent on, um, I don't want to say distance, but on in-person hangouts? Like, did, mm-hmm. did it matter if you had to be doing an activity? Or was this person somebody that you were texting regardless of hanging out or doing anything together? Yes. I feel like you and I were able to, like, create the foundations of mm-hmm. a strong friendship during COVID. Yeah. And I don't know how. I think we just talked a lot. We just, th- remember we texted a lot and we used to send each other like long ass videos explaining like it'd be like something dramatic would happen in our life. And then, oh my God. And then and I would send each other like 80 videos on like Snapchat or Instagram being like, and you won't believe what happened next. And then this happened. Remember when we used to do that? Oh my God. That was actually the beginning of our friendship. That's actually a really beautiful thing that we Aww, shared. Oh, that's so nice. I can't believe I just poured my heart out to somebody I barely, I don't want to say I barely knew, but... <laughs> You barely knew. She stayed in my house in Korea. You, you stayed in my house. You used my bathroom. You laid on my inflatable <laughs> mattress. You're a user, Mohammed. You used me. <laughs> oh, my God. That's actually funny. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was so patronizing. <laughs> Anyways. So, question. Yeah. Um, what, was, what are things that you think are deal breakers in friendship? Do you think it's time for a break? Yeah, I'd love a break. Okay, how about we talk about the deal breakers when once we we're back? Sounds good. Okay, bye, bye guys. Hey girlies, how are ya? Since the conversation's about friendship breakups, how about we turn the tables and have a friendship makeup? Can you imagine if you share the podcast to two of your friends and they share it to other three friends, you can be your own boss, girly. True friends support each other. So support us and give us money. Do it, coward. We're back. We're back. Sorry, that was quite loud. I'm so sorry. Let me do some ASMR to make that better for you. <laughs> Ow! You scream in their you ears. You hit me. <laughs> you hit me. I don't know where I got that from, but it's been on my She's mind. She's saying it for a week now. You hit me. So if anybody knows, please let me know. I hope it's not something problematic. <laughs>
I don't remember. Um, my foot went numb in the five seconds that we recorded <laughs> before. She's so dramatic. She when when we stopped for the break and she got, she's like, ah, I can't. What have you done to me, you witch? Is what she said to me. I fall and I can't get up. I fall and I can't get up. Okay, guys. So before the break, what mm-hmm. were we talking about? We were talking about how to lose a friend in mm-hmm. ten days. Precisely. <laughs> also known as a classic Matthew McConaughey film and Kate Hudson. I love that movie so much. I can't stop thinking about that yellow dress that she wears at the end. Yeah. Do you remember that yellow dress? It was the really backless one? I can't lie. I hated the color yellow. But she looked beautiful in it. Yeah, okay. But like yellow is just not my cup of tea. Really? Yeah. It's, I love a good yellow. It's too... um. It's not for everybody, I guess. Seamstressy. I don't know. Maybe it's not for you, pale-skinned wench. She was pale-skinned. That's true. How could you? Anyways. I trusted you. I trusted you. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're not going to be a part of this. <laughs> okay. So I think it's uh, time we get into it. You have notes? Yeah. That seems unfair. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> I can't really argue with that. I can't. Mainly I brought notes just because I have a lot to say and I didn't want to forget anything. Don't worry about it. Mind your manners. You're so nosy. What is that? That's like four pages worth. She's so nosy. I can't do anything without you cheating. Okay, whatever. Get started then. You start then if you're okay. so thorough. Number one, a toxic friend who looks over your notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm toxic now. I'm a friend. <laughs> I feel like people overuse the word toxic so many times. It's quite comical, I think. Yeah. Do um, you know what toxic is? Do you actually know? Do you? Do you? Why are you yelling in my ear? I just, I can't hear that word anymore. Yeah, it's cool. It, it, the word is, this itself is toxic. Mm-hmm. It's, I use it ironically. Good. Continue. Okay. Um, so, I guess we will uh, get into the question of what would you say is something that would kill a friendship for you there are many things you start okay how about like we take two back and forth yeah yeah yeah. i think according to my notes what did i have here (laughs) for my whole list oh okay this is a kind of a big one um that i've noticed a lot with our community Mm -hmm. okay no tea no shade uh if you do this maybe rectify yourself (laughs) (laughs) stop yeah (laughs) okay uh, the people that seem to only come to you when times are tough for them. So all they want to do is complain. They come to you for the negatives, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, you know, my life is horrible. It's shit. It, nothing good comes into it. You know, the, you know those type of people, right? Just negative Nancys all around. Mm. But the minute anything good comes up in their life, um, aka an engagement... Um, even just graduating, getting a new job. They don't um, want to share. They don't want to share. They don't want to share. It's so weird. Maybe this will be, this is very much in context within the Arab community. Mm-hmm. Like this is something that I, I have no idea if other communities do this, but predominantly the Arab community, you see this a lot. There's something, Arabs feel, sorry, let me just fix this. Arabs just feel a certain type of way mm-hmm. regarding sharing good news because they think that they're going to get the evil eye mm-hmm. or somebody's going to jinx them. But then, so then instead they carry this persona of misery. Mm-hmm. And then that way they can make sure that nobody would jinx them. I think that's a big part of it. It's such a drag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they play up anything bad in their life mm-hmm. just to make sure that they have a good coding and that you don't look at them at all with any sort of envy. But it's, if this is somebody that you consider a friend and you're doing this to then maybe you should reevaluate your friends. Yeah, you should reevaluate the definition of the word itself. Yeah, because I know, like, for me, the first person I'd want to celebrate with is my family and my friends. Mm-hmm. Who else would I want to go to? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, you have to share every sort of good news with any Tim and Bob mm-hmm. around the neighborhood, you mm-hmm. know? But the people that you consider close to, and you have no problem going to them only when times are rough, and you want to complain, I think you kind of, I don't want to say owe it to them, but, like, you need to have some sort of balance. For sure. It's because mm-hmm. it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one. I've had some of those in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll give you one. Mm-hmm. Um, friends, I've had this as well. Um, friends that tend to be, what's the word? different towards you in different situations meaning that there's no consistent behavior from them oh so 
I've had these friends where they're like in front of a certain group of people, they would treat me in a certain manner. In front of others, they would treat me differently. Mm. And there's a certain inconsistency. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be shady, but I will say that I've, I've noticed this from my, my male friends mm-hmm. is that they would privately, like if it's just us talking on the phone, they're very kind. They're very, I don't want to say emotional, but they're more in touch with their emotions. More I guess when they're talking vulnerable, maybe. Yes. More vulnerable, more empathetic. Mm-hmm. And then I would hang out with them in public with their large group of people. And the things that they said to me in private would be like, let's say like they were supporting like a feminist cause with me. And they were Mm -hmm. like, oh, you're right about that. And in front of people, I would bring it up and they'd be like, duh, you're extreme. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen to me. So it's like you are, I feel like that is really telling about the way that you view me. Maybe you don't respect my points of view enough. Maybe you're insecure with your own ideas and opinions that you can't have one consistent idea and opinion that you can portray in front of people you're a people pleaser Mm -hmm. um i've had that and i felt like that was in a few cases i was like oh yeah this is very destructive to this friendship because i can't trust you yeah because i don't know what you're gonna say like i don't know if the things that i'm saying to you are actually you're actually agreeing with me or not if we're seeing eye to eye or in front of people you're just gonna act the fool that's so embarrassing yeah oh it's gonna be so embarrassing isn't that like a whole avril lavigne song what do you mean? Complicated. Why you gotta make things so complicated? Wasn't it? Come on, <laughs> think. Yeah, well, anyways, search up the lyrics. I think it's exactly that. Is it? I'm gonna look it up later. And she's like, you change in front of your friends. Did she say that? Uh, not like that exactly, but... <laughs> <laughs> you change in front of your friends. Change clothes? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, it, it is an actual song. I listen to her all the time. Sure. So. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's a good point. I think a lot of the times... I have no problem with someone disagreeing with me as long as you come at it respectfully. Like, we don't have to see eye to eye on on everything. Yeah. uh, No, I I just want consistency. Yeah. Like, you can, let's say, like, we're talking on the phone and you go, no, man, that's stupid. I want you to be able to, if we're sitting with people, go, no, man, that's stupid. The same way you told me privately. But not look me in the eye when we're alone and go, you know what? You got a point there. I'm so grateful I had this conversation with you. Great. And then in public, you Mm -hmm. berate me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That has a lot to do with, you know, their whole delicacy of a masculinity mm. type of thing especially if you've if you've noticed it mainly with your male friends that's what i'm saying i mainly noticed it with my male friends it's very upsetting for me and my homegirls they're just so insecure they really are don't know what for, for. they're turning they're not turning heads. <laughs> <laughs> they're the ones that are turning their heads all the time why won't men keep their heads where they belong <laughs> straight forward <laughs> just 360 <laughs> Ew! disgusting what a horrifying image what a horrifying image indeed hit me with one more um you know what? Let's kind of expand on that. Sure. Um, on that point. What were we just talking about? Mm. And friends, people treating you differently with each other than they do in front of other people. Oh, um, this kind of, not that part, but the part where <laughs> where I was saying, like, I don't mind disagreements in friendships. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're very vital for growth, that they kind of help open up different perspectives. And like I said, you don't have to agree on everything. No. Um, For me, I have certain boundaries that I don't like crossed, so I don't mind having disagreements on them. But for example, one of them would be religion. That's something very personal to me. That's very, um, like, it hits close to home. Mm -hmm. So if I were to have a conversation with somebody, I don't mind, like, you can talk about your opinion. I can talk about my opinion. It's my opinion! And that's fine. But the minute they start to get aggressive about it, that they start to get... Um, rude? Disrespectful? Rude, disrespectful, um, almost like interrogating me. Belittling? Belittling? Yeah. I see that a lot. Yeah, and then a lot of the times it's like they want you to, to answer certain things. It's like you're put on trial. Mm-hmm. You Free know? beliefs. Sure. And I, I get this a lot, I guess, uh, when it comes from like a religious standpoint, since mm-hmm. I am more, I guess, openly practicing. Mm-hmm. Um... And, you know, like, friendships, they can't grow past a certain point if you basically berate someone for their core beliefs. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I think personal boundaries are a huge one for me. Again, I can have a conversation, but if you're going to disagree, disagree with, you know, I'm going home with my thoughts and opinions and you're going home with yours. Yeah. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with also trying to find an in-between. And if you can't find an in-between, I really don't think that they're, like, Things like this are friendship ruiners. 
if you are respectful to somebody and if you still value their opinions and their feelings, mm -hmm. then nobody, just because you have different ideologies or beliefs in your friends, it shouldn't destroy you. Is that a bug? There was definitely a bug there that I saw it. No, don't say that. Nope, it's gone. Is it? Nope, it's there. <laughs> it's right there. It went through your grubby fingers. Grubby? <laughs> what, what's that small? <laughs> I'm on the office. <laughs> My friend has it. <laughs> yeah, that did feel like the office. My friend has grubby fingers. <laughs> what about yours? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wait, what's another one that I can think of? Oh, um, friends that are constantly trying to, um, like, not fight you, but they're always, like, going through something with you. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Like, there's always a conflict. Yes. Um, that reminds me a lot of, I feel like I had a lot of friends in high school where that was the case a lot. It was like, there's always drama. Mm -hmm. There's always something wrong, and it was never addressed properly. Do you guys remember, especially this was a huge thing when we were younger. It'd be like, this one, th like, let's say, like, I vaguely said something about, oh, like, I showed up to school, and I was like, I was like, oh, that guy was wearing a really interesting outfit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then somebody would hear it and be like, oh, okay, that's like not, not a good thing. And then she would go to Raghaz and be like, did you hear like a man said that you had a bad outfit on today? Because that's how it works. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's like a game of telephone. So then you right away, you're like, oh, I hate a man now. So then you start going around saying, don't be for her friend. Like, she's a snake. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff I felt was like, it's something that is very particular to a smaller, to like smaller towns. Like, I felt mm -hmm. like I used to see that in Windsor a lot. I was not really much a big part of it. I experienced it a few times. But I remember being like, you people are so weird. Why would nobody just address this thing that's happened? Yeah. Th there's a lot of passive aggressive behavior in Canada. I don't know why I felt it in Canada. I've never seen so many passive people, passive aggressive people as much as I have in Canada. Well, even I remember like talking to, um, I guess they're not technically like a newcomer, but they've been in the country for a while. And they even said like, Canadians are super fake mm -hmm. like fake in in the way that they in their mannerisms yes they'll smile to your face they'll shake your hand tell you how the heck are you how the heck are you bob and ah. uh <laughs> the behind your back they'll basically crucify you yes 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 yeah. yes so i've sensed that i used to sense that a lot when i was younger i think maybe now i don't notice it as much it's because i filtered that out of my life and or i've been accustomed mm -hmm. to this really like shady cultural difference mm -hmm. where in Canada people are either like if they like in Jordan like if you did some stupid shit like people would just come to you and be like what the hell's your problem they would fight you yeah you know what I mean or they would let it go but in here it's this constant like again game of telephone like we're not picking yes and nothing yeah. gets solved and and you find yourself being the villain would not realizing that you've been behaving a certain man like t tell people when you don't like their behavior mm -hmm. if you care about them you know what I mean that's something that I feel like I can't, I can't maintain friendships like that yeah. because I'm walking on eggshells. That is draining. It's very draining. Um, that actually is one thing that I also can't stand is the lack of holding a friend accountable mm -hmm. and also being held accountable. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I tell so-and-so, hey, you know what? Um, what you did in, on Tuesday, the June 17th or whatever... I think that's Labiba's birthday. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> On the day Labiba was born, no, <laughs> you disrespected me, disrespected my, my father. family, <laughs> and Labiba. <laughs> and Labiba. Um, and I tell you, hey, like that really upset me. If your first reaction is to laugh it off, or tell me I'm being sensitive, mm. or basically being like defensive about it, or just dismissing it altogether like making excuses mm -hmm. just be accountable be like hey i'm actually really sorry that i was kind of shitty back then or i did this to upset you i won't do it again and actually mean that mm -hmm. you won't do it again because nothing gets solved if things are repetitive yeah but also i think you have to owe that same level of respect to yourself mm -hmm. where if somebody has a problem with you you also have to graciously take it yeah and you don't have to become defensive mm -hmm. i think that there should be a fine line between like, you're allowed to stand up for yourself. Let's say, like, you say something to me and you're like, I mean, you did this. And I feel that there's a, there's a valid reason. Mm -hmm. I would explain it. But there's a big difference between, like, having general, like, actual feelings and want to share them back or 
the, that awful of like you're so sensitive mm. what's your problem and like it happens over and over again i think that's something that's also kind of scary is like the repeated behavior like you point it out once and they just keep doing it and you're like okay or it turns into like a one-upping it's like well <gasps> you did this this yes. and that so you're not valid you can go straight to hell <laughs> 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 I feel like that's such a that seems like such a um like a nineties relationship thing that would happen. You know what I mean? Like the guy would be like, Oh, like we were you didn't do the dishes and she'd be like, Well what have you ever done, Bobby? You you hate my mother You would never buy me anything. My friends all have Cadillacs and I have a Ford <laughs> Who do you think you are? I feel like that was reminds me of it. Yeah. It is something very dramatic so dramatic about like a friend being like, Well what about that time? <laughs> like, okay. Just write a book. <laughs> exactly. Or just tell me at the time that it happened and let it go. I think that's also something that kind of prevents a friendship from growing in the sense oh, that it's holding in. It's holding it in. Like if somebody upsets you, mm. please address it like at the time because you can't go like six months later and be like, Oh, I didn't like it when you did this and I've been holding it in since yeah. for ten years now. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm and gonna... all this resentment builds up and because you start to villainize the other person. Once one resentment starts, like little uh you can think of it like you know what? You can think of it as our beautiful cloud, yes. right? Imagine one bug starts to fester. He invites his friends. Yes. And suddenly this big cloud is taken over. Yes. Why is the bug he? Okay, fine. So then the neighboring she cloud <laughs> or the she bugs. <laughs> she, she bugs. That sounds like a band. Like a band. You know? There's a she bug in the closet. It's a great song by Shakira called the She Wolf. Um, anyways, so then they start to invite their friends and there's a party here going, a party here. Eventually the whole thing becomes overtaken by a rioting <laughs> group of flies. Right. And, um, what there's no friendship left. left. Mark is gone. Your mom Your left. Gone. She rocketed all the way to the moon. Your rain is infested. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, so one. you can't let it build up. No. It's awful. It's so kind of productive. Mm-hmm. Rakhane are actually really good at this. Rakhane address our issues right away. I, I actually love that so much because it takes out, it takes <laughs> off a lot of the stress mm. and it takes off a lot of the anxiety. You know when like somebody does something to you and it's a little bit uncomfortable? Yeah, and you just sit there. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. But then nothing gets done about it. And then every time you see them, it's like, mm, I don't want to, I don't really want to deal with them. And then you eventually stop dealing with them. Altogether. Well, suck, suck. suck. Yeah. Just, you know, maybe it's not meant to be in that case. That's kind of hard. It's so heartbreaking. No, but it's, it is true. And it's so, it's, nothing's more awful than being anxious about around a friend, you know, mm-hmm. walking around, walking on eggshells around friends. That's exhausting. Yeah. Um, let's think about some fun ones. What are some fun ones? I actually have a really interesting Ooh, the question. Um, this is, I, I'm so like nervous to bring this up because I know some people are okay with this and that's okay. You can totally be fine with this. Mm. But if somebody were to, if a close friend of mine were to, for example, marry my brother, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would destroy my friendship. That's so gross. I wouldn't want that. God. This is uh, not signaling to anybody or anything. This is just my personal view on it because here's the thing. You're put in an awkward predicament it's, it's now. It's a conflict of interest. Yeah. You don't know whose side to go out. Imagine there's a fight. Imagine... You want to complain about one side to the other. Yeah, they just tell each other, right? You'll yeah. be a bad guy at the end. And then you also have the mother-in-law, aka your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. And then <laughs> once she starts to interfere, things get messy. Mm. Um, certain opinions start to fly, especially during wedding times. Oh, financial budgets. What's happening here? It's all <laughs> up in the air. And I just feel like I would not want to be a part of that at all. And I guess you can clarify that in the beginning, right? But yeah. It's, it's inevitable. I would say that it's always a lot more fun to have your sister-in-law become your friend. Yes. Rather than starting it off that way. No, I agree. It's funny because, like, I bet that happens a lot to people. So, for example, if one of your friends, uh, I can't even say it. It's so awkward. No. Let's break. Okay, so you know I don't exactly. Want it. <laughs> so the connotations are there. Would you break off that friendship? Or do you think it'll break off on its own naturally? I feel like naturally. I'm not going to... I I will address it right away because I feel like I'm that type of person to be like, hey, mm-hmm. don't be weird. Mm. You know? Don't tell me that you guys kiss gingerly behind the church. 
you know? The church. He's Muslim. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like there's something about kissing gingerly behind a church. I always used to see it. Remember, like, all the, the TV shows you kiss gingerly behind a church? That's so disrespectful. It is. Ow! That's ah! Yeah. Ow. Wow, that was an immediate curse. <laughs> um, Going off on that. Yeah. I have no problem sharing this story because I'm pretty sure they're here on my podcast. They were th- there were these two girls. Okay. In high school. And they were best friends. Since grade school. Okay. Bestest for, uh, the bestest of friends. One of them dated this guy for let's say like a year and a half and maybe like grade 10 or 11. It was a pretty long relationship for that age group. You know, mm-hmm. they usually break it off after a couple of months. But they were together for a while. They broke up and her best friend proceeded to date him. Which obviously destroyed her relationship with her best friend, right? Because they're like, she's dating her ex. And she's still dating him till this day, okay? And the question is, like, they were clearly supposed to, they're like meant to be. You know what I mean? They're still dating. It's been like 10 years, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Since they were literal literal kids, they're still together. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said there about maybe they were meant to be. But that's so weird because... I was telling this to Ragad, whenever any of my friends have, like, any crushes on any guys or have any, any, like, romance come about with another guy, right away that man becomes completely and utterly... Humpty Dumpty. Yes. He is not, like, a sexual being anymore. They're not romantic. They cannot be... They're nothing but... They're Kens. They're a bunch of Kens. You know what I mean? That's what I feel. Yeah. So I can't even get in the idea of, like... Being like, oh, that's my friend's ex, but he he could be a, a potential prospect. That's so disgusting to me. I don't even want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Does it gross you out too? Yeah, it's something that, okay, I get it. Maybe they are soulmates. But you have to pick one. Either your soulmate, soulmate, <laughs> soulmate, <laughs> or your friend. You can't have both. And to be honest, she's not missing out on the friend. She That girl was not a good friend. I'm glad that she took her boyfriend. <laughs> T-shaped pick of an aid. Honestly, she was not that great of a friend and she was really annoying. And she dated like 708 guys after him within the year. Wow. She moved so, fast. She moved on so fast. So you know what I mean? Like, but that girl stayed with this guy forever. So there's some, definitely something. There's more value, I think. Okay. In the long lasting. So best of luck. You know who you are. Definitely not watching this. Definitely not. Um, they definitely don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay. This seems to be more of a therapy session for you. Um... Any more? Any more takers? No, I'm done. What? You gave... What? What? <laughs> you don't have any more um, Any more issues? Things that make me want to lose a friend? Oh, um, this is for... This is for everybody, I think, is the uh, issue between a friend having feelings for you and developing romantic feelings. That's usually an automatic killer because no matter how much you try to... In my personal experience, it's completely me. I don't think this is applies to all people. But for me, um, no matter how much I've tried to move on, and they've also agreed, let's move on, we're going to stay friends, mm-hmm. inevitably their feelings get hurt, and and then it become, the friendship becomes extremely toxic. See, not to plug in my agenda here, but my whole... Okay, I actually, I'm, I'm worried I might get flamed for this. <gasps> yeah, that's uh, my take on it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I disagree... Because I have seen it go really, really well, but I've also experienced a lot of those L's. And it's, sometimes it's not even, sometimes it's just, it's, it's the discomfort that you feel. Like, they don't even have to make a straight up pass at you. You can sense it mm-hmm. in the, in the ozone layer. You can feel it in the atmosphere. In this atmosphere. In this one right here. In the universe. Ew, stop doing that with your fingers. I don't, I've never done this before and it feels so alien-like. So strange. I am strange. Creepy. I am bizarre. Mm. I'm so weird. <coughs> You're so quirky. I choked them on spit. Um, do <laughs> I have any more? <laughs> let me think. Did but I let write... me think. Let me look at my notes. Let, let me cheat a little bit here. Um. Oh. Okay. So we were kind of talking about this before. I've never talked to her in my life. <laughs> <laughs> remember when you asked? Okay, this might be like misunderstood. But remember when you were like, "Oh, would you have like an ugly girl in your group?" I s- how did I know that's what that's what you're gonna say? We didn't discuss this before. I mean, we did a long time ago, but I didn't think that she would say this. Okay, y'all. Rara truly said. I asked her. Okay, I have this really bad habit where I keep asking people ridiculous things. So, for example, I would like um, 
I walk strange and I'd be like, would you be my friend if I walk like this? Right? That's like a thing that I do. So I once asked Rayla, and it was like a routine thing. You know, I ask it all the time. She says no all the time. She ignores me. Mm. And that one time I went, would you be my friend if I was ugly? And she looked at me dead in the eye. And she said no. Can I explain? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, you can almost imagine the shock that I experienced. I was like, how dare you? But she does have a good point. Please explain your theory on this. I'm just worried somebody's going to come and be like, you're the ugly friend. <laughs> Like, okay. <laughs> That's so hurtful. Okay. When I say ugly, I don't mean physically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I think that, okay. When you say the ugly friend, I think of it more as an aura. Because mm. okay. beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we already know that we're adults. Yeah. Everybody has different types and different different strokes for different folks. But mm. it's the, the ugly energy, especially like, let's talk about girls, like the ugly girl energy. It's this, like, explain. You're so good at explaining it. Explain it. Basically, like, the ugly girl energy is acting like you're actually ugly. And that you're so insecure that you have to make everybody feel so awkward about it all the time. You bring it up. So, for example, you take a, a picture and you, you, you know, you look at your photo and you go, Oh my god, I'm so ugly. And then everyone's like, oh, like, it's okay. And then she'll be like, wait, that's a very ugly photo of you too. Yeah. Yeah. Or it can either go that way or it can go, well, you don't know anything about that because you always look pretty. Yeah, it's one of two extremes. Either they try to put you down yeah. on their ugly level or, um, you know, they put you on a pedestal. Yeah. But it's it kind of ties in with the earlier uh, point where you are, um, people are jealous. I don't want to say, like, oh, my God, they're so, so jealous, jealous of, of me. me. <laughs> it's so ugly. But there is something to be said about someone with ugly energy. Yeah. And then just looking at their friends in envy. Yeah. Because not necessarily that they're ugly, but they view themselves as ugly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. I remember when you said that, I was like, oh, I know exactly what kind of person you're talking about. I feel like we've all met somebody like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just this, the absolute negativity of, like, wanting to others to feel... Um, sympathy mm-hmm. rather than empathy, mm-hmm. just a lot of sympathy, mm-hmm. or they want other people to feel uncomfortable in their own skin so that they can feel some sort of solidarity with them. Like I had an instance, for example, mm. of a person, um, of a friend of mine, and she was hanging out with her friends, and they were basically like, "Oh my god, like I wish I could get plastic surgery, like I would get this done." And then the other friends like, "I would get this done." And then they went over to that like the friend, and they asked her like, "What would you get done?" And then she's like, nothing. They're like, really? Like, what? The passive aggression behind that? Really? What about that big nose? I feel like that's what somebody would say to me. Oh, my God. Like. That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's so weird. That's so rude. (laughs) People can be so mean. I. What would you get done, Ogad? How dare you? Go to hell! <laughs> Why don't you go straight to hell? That's been my favorite. Lala has been tra- changing it up. She does something new every time. Two weeks ago, it was, how dare you? I trusted you. That was insufferable. Now she's doing, um, go to hell. And you're also doing, what, what is it? Don't hit me. What is it? You hit me. <laughs> and she doesn't know where it's from. If you know where it's from, please leave it in the comments below. Please and thanks. Great. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, I'm all uh, puckered out. Yeah, me too. Uh, we would love to know if you guys, you know, you guys can go ahead and, and DM us, DM us, or leave comments in our YouTube video regarding mm-hmm. what are your what friendship deal breakers, you know? Because it's really interesting. It's different for everybody. Yeah, I actually went around asking a bunch of people, and it kind of, it always stems into one of three categories. Either your boundaries crossed, or you're not prioritized. Or betrayal. Or betray- oh, actually, this is a funny one uh, to leave off on. Uh, so I asked Labiba, I was like, what's a, a deal breaker in your friendship? And she literally said, sabotage. And I'm like, this isn't, this is a problem. This it doesn't just stem down to the friendship. This is like, oh, You're I diabolical would, as a person. I want to be friends with a murderer. Like, this is yeah, <laughs> not a popular a, opinion. <laughs> Labiba took it so extreme. <laughs> you just asked. But the point that she raised was, it was actually kind of interesting. She said that, um, imagine she applied for a job. And she set her friend as a reference, and that job called that friend, and that friend literally was like, "Don't you Get ever re- a what, hire one? her? Yeah. She's awful. She's gonna make Microsoft hack into your corporate system." 
Is that because she's an engineer? Oh, okay, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I never even thought about that. Can people, people, you know what's funny is I always think these things are completely like out of the question. But there are some people that are unhinged enough to actually sabotage your life that way. Mm-hmm. That's frightening. You need yeah. help. Yeah, so be careful of who your friends are. Don't trust anybody. And uh, paranoia is your best friend. Yeah, I'd... what? <laughs> Be friendly. Be be a butterfly. A social. This is her earlier going. I was such a social butterfly. I what? Ragat hates everybody. <laughs> and everybody hates Ragat. How dare you? Who's the? We also really want to know. I'm really curious to know. Mm-hmm. Is who do you guys think is the friendlier one between us? Because we take shifts. Oh, I guess so. We take shifts, but I'd love to know. You know, in your personal opinion, who appears to be friendlier? Because if you think it's Ragat, you're wrong. I think I'm the friendlier you one. You can't tell them. <laughs> they have to watch <laughs> and they have to tell. <laughs> I can gently <laughs> push them towards us. That's side. just, this is like voter bias. <laughs> it really okay, is. We gotta end this now before we have our first friend fight. That's right. First friend yeah. fight. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching slash listening. Yeah. Um, please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Expired Musings. On TikTok and Expired Musings, we've been, we've been posting some funky stuff, including the creation of this beautiful piece of art. Yeah. So please make sure to follow us. Um, of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and like the video. This is another reminder to like and subscribe. I was frightened. Fine joke. Were you frightened? Oh my god, my heart rate. So dramatic. Okay. And that's all, guys. Alrighty, take care. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. Love you. See you. See you. See you.